this heat. Hey, Chicago, what are you doing to keep cool? Michelle thought it wasn't a date. It isn't. Going to an awful lot of trouble for just another smooth talking brother. He's the summer associate I told y'all about, the one from Harvard Law. He invited me to a community event. So, what's this boy's name? Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Hi. Hello. You're late. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. I expected it. You were late for your first day of work. You noticed that too. I'm your advisor. I'm supposed to notice. <laughs> well, Michelle, all set? Mm hmm? Shouldn't we be getting to the meeting? Uh, we have some time. I thought we'd swing by the art center, see some paintings, maybe grab a bite to eat. This is not a date. How's it gonna look if I start dating the first cute black guy who walks through the firm's doors? It would be tacky. You think I'm cute? I didn't say that. You can tell by the smile. So why did you come to Chicago? To try and make a difference. Thought I would too. Maybe I'd help women empower them. You and I share a lot of the same interests. That's sweet of you, but I'm an ice cream kind of girl. Who doesn't like pie? This Barack's woman, Michelle. Finally a sister. Mm -hmm. We're not together. Pretty good setting to bring a girl surrounded by people who adore you. We gotta stop thinking no is the end of the line. You flip those letters around, you get an entirely different word. On. As in carry on. And an inspirational speech that had everybody in awe. Say it with me now. They say no, we say. It's been a while since I've had that kind of connection to real life struggle. I just want to do more. Yeah, so do I. I wonder if I can write books or hold a position of influence in civil rights. Politics? Maybe. You want some? Sure. I think you're real smooth, don't you? And real cute. I mean, they did look good on Dumbo. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Woo! Thank you. Congratulations uh, on the movie. It's it's extremely subtle. It's a wonderful depiction of this couple on a date that happened to be Barack and Michelle Obama. And I got to tell you, I love me some Barack and Michelle Obama stories, pictures, everything. They are just so charismatic and wonderful. But I got to ask you, you know, this is your first feature film, right? What gave you the confidence to attack this material? Because I think so many people would buckle under the pressure of sort of doing the first movie, no matter what it would be, about the current pre the sitting president, the sitting first black president. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't call it confidence. I'd call it stupidity. <laughs> um, I, think, I think if I was a smarter person, I would have thought a little bit more about how you know how it would be placed or received the the political ramifications, but what what I was really drawn to, um, you know, back in 2007, um, when 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 the president and the first lady were just you know rising to national prominence, um, uh, it was just the way they look at each other, you know, the way they flirt. There, there's a, a really special love and special connection between them, and um, I what even even then I, I was just a fan. I wasn't thinking about you know a movie. But when I read about the first date, um, it really had the makings of a movie because they went on this epic day across Chicago. Um, but moreover, it had the, the classic boy chases girl conflict. Michelle was not interested at first, and, and, and Barack had one day to make his case. And, uh, and, and, and by the end of the day, by the first lady's own admission, he, he had done just that. She fell for him. So I, I really related to that. Um, and but then at the same time, not to interrupt, what you do so wonderfully with the film is treat everything a bit with a certain amount of a light touch because it could be so weighted. You could add so much weight to it, but you kind of let that hang in the background so that the audience can pull from it if they want to or they can kind of watch this somewhat lighthearted first date. Yeah, well, I mean, from the very beginning, once I related to the story and I, I figured out how I was going to approach it, um, and it was all about love. It was all about creating a credible, cr a credible love story between these two characters. And so I just made the calculation that everyone's going to bring their own relationship to the president and the first lady, to politics, to social issues. They're going to bring their relationship 
into the movie anyway, so we don't really have to think about that stuff. We can just try to build a love story, and we can, we can try to create this connection. Well, with President Obama, and especially with Michelle, I mean, when it comes to social issues and politics, for me personally, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very much on the left, and I, and I love President Obama. I've had problems with certain decisions that he's made, but every time he or Michelle take the stage, I'm immediately like, I love these guys. They're amazing. They're the most charismatic people I've ever seen in my life. And, <laughs> and I have to say, as much as he took on the job as a filmmaker, and that's a daunting task, I would imagine that's a pretty daunting task to take on those roles as actors. And the two of you do a wonderful job sort of signaling to things that we know about them, certain mannerisms, but without ever impersonating the two, the two of them, which is, I would imagine, could have been really difficult. How did you approach these, these roles? Yeah, I mean, for me, that was the tough part. Uh, the impersonation is not that hard. Something like this. Uh, there is no blue America. There is no red America. That sort of thing. That's like, that's, thank you. That's, um, yeah, that's the easy part. But then dropping that and playing a 28-year-old Barack Obama, um, that was, yeah, that was a little tougher to, to do. And let the, the, impersonation or like his tics, his mannerisms, pop out like organically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just played the truth of the scene and just really listened to one another as actors uh, to bring the realism. And it's fun to watch them pop out organically. I was even saying to you in the green room, you know, there's a moment in, where you're giving that speech in the church and you do this side finger wag, which I notice Barack do all the time, but it's not something that you're expecting you to do as an actor because you're not constantly doing an impersonation. You get to have that wonderful moment as a viewer, like, oh, there it is. Oh, that's cool. He did a little Barack thing. The community meeting, yeah, that's that's when we decided you would see sort of the glimpses of the future president. Um, one, because he was public speaking. I mean, he was speaking in public, so he's a little different than he was privately with Michelle. Um, but also, you see how he can inspire and, and move people. But even then, he's still 28-year-old public speaker, so you have to be, he's not going to be, I mean, he's not the same public speaker eight years ago as he is now, if you look at those speeches. To go, what about you going into doing Michelle? It was natural. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally flawless. No, I'm kidding. Um, for me, you know, I didn't have uh, the 25-year-old videos that I can go and play because there's none out there that I know of. She's always been a much more private person than Barack as well. She sort yeah, of yeah. She herself on her privacy. But I read a lot of books, and uh, her brother's book, Game of Character, really helped me to see who she was during that time. And also, um, we got a dialect coach and uh, really worked on her the way she speaks, it's, it's, it's very particular. And uh, so I had to work on that. And then uh, some of her mannerisms, you know, as well. But overall, I feel like the words and, and the, the picture was basically painted. I just had to fill it in. And through personal accounts, I was able to kind of create the Michelle that I thought she was during that time. So I had a little bit more movement. But I definitely wanted you to see, like, eyebrows and we researched her hair during that time what colors she wore we wanted her to look classy but there's still a sexiness to her um and a strength so uh yeah that's that's kind of how i went about going after michelle robinson oh excuse me michelle robinson yeah um <laughs> now one of the things that's true about their first date is that they went and saw do the right thing right at the end of their day which is an incredible thing that the first black president of the united states went and saw do the right thing on his first date with his wife that's just, that's just crazy, like, to me. It's, it's wonderful. And as a filmmaker, you could have written a whole movie about the conversation, almost, that took place after that. And for you, I think what you did, which is so smart, it's just a few lines of sort of recognition and, and sort of knowing how they may have felt about it at that time. Were you ever tempted to sort of write longer, sort of longer pieces of dialogue about how they would feel about that, or even the interaction with their, their white employer after seeing the movie? Well, I, that, that was actually the key, is that they, not only did they go see Do the Right Thing, but they ran into their, uh, to uh, a white partner from the law firm uh, after it, at the movie. And is that true, too? That's true. And, and, and Michelle was reluctant to be out on a date because of perceptions in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the law office, um, a professional code. So it, so it gave me the opportunity to lay out the differences in perception between white America and black America in the ending of Do the Right Thing. And also, how does somebody like Barack, who straddles the line between white and black America as a biracial male, how does he 
How does he uh, appease the white partner who's kind of infuriated by the ending or confused? And how, and how does he actually feel when he's just with Michelle and feeling comfortable? But simultaneously, Michelle's character in the aftermath of that is, uh, is dealing with a, a bit of a gender right. bias that's going on, gender politics in the office. So it was a juicy scene to write. It's quick, but, um, but all credit goes to Spike Lee, the great Spike Lee, for creating a movie in 1989 that is still totally relevant today and indelible probably for all time. Absolutely. When you're showing moments of, I mean, I haven't seen uh, Do the Right Thing in a few years, but even just seeing the moments of Radio Rahim's death at the end of the movie and the idea of Michelle and Barack watching that moment was extremely resonant. And I didn't even think of it when, when I knew that they were going. I was like, oh my God, Radio Rahim right now, everything that's going on, this is in incredible to watch. I have to say, what I loved about the scene with the employer was how you played the idea that he can straddle the black world and the white world, but he can't really straddle the sort of gender worlds that well. He doesn't see what's going on with Michelle in that scene. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, throughout the, I think throughout the film, until maybe that moment, he just, he didn't really get it. Or maybe in the car before the community meeting. Uh, she finally drives it home and he's like, ah, oh, right, I, I didn't understand that. And as intelligent and as thoughtful as he is, I think that even put him, you know, humbled him. He's like, oh, I can learn something from this woman. Uh, which I think makes her more attractive to him. Can you talk about playing that scene and, and reading that scene? Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite scenes because um, she, she's not only, she, I think she no longer, you know, there's this line where she says, I feel like I'm going from planet black to planet white. And I think she's, and she's done it in Princeton. She's done it at Harvard. She just wants to be herself all the time. She doesn't want to straddle. She doesn't want to do any of that stuff. She just wants to fluidly be herself. And so I think that's one thing that she was trying to express to Barack during the date, but then also dealing with gender issues and, you know, this, the line of take good care of him. You know, that really bothered her. And to Sexist line. Such yeah. a sexist line. And that throughout the whole film, that's her reluctance. You know, she worked so hard to get to where she was at that time that she didn't want to be over, she, she can stand on her own two feet and her own intelligence and didn't want to be looked at as this person's girlfriend or that I'm the woman who's gonna just take good care of him. You know what I mean? So um, I just thought it was very smart, really, very relevant, and especially in 1989, being surrounded by mostly men and white men and having to prove yourself in this situation, knowing that you have the abilities, as many abilities as them, you know? so. I love that scene. I have to say, one of the things that I really loved about the film is that I think we see President Barack Obama as an and Michelle as an inspiration now, yeah. as the president and the first lady right now. And we forget about this period of time where they were coming up. And exploring that on film is also interesting because rarely do we see young black characters of uh, upward mobility, yeah. I think, on film. And it happens to be that this is Barack and Michelle here which gives them even greater significance and inspiration. But if it wasn't Barack and Michelle, I don't think we would we, we would ever see this. We rarely ever see this story on film. I mean, that's why it was important to make it. Um, you know, when I first read the synopsis that Richard wrote, I was intrigued because I just thought it was so intelligent and the complexity of, of somebody thinking the perspective, taking the perspective of a 25 and a 28 year old in their humble beginnings, you know, where they're just, they're evolving, you know, and when he wrote the script, I was like, any two actors would want to play th these full characters. You don't always get to play that, especially as black actors, but it's also, they cross the lines of reaching out to black, white, whatever. I think so many people feel connected to them because of their authenticity, but you don't normally see you know, a walk and talk with two black leads who are falling in love and it's just a really good date movie. They just happen to have amazing conversations surrounding the date. And um, for me, as one of the producers on this film, it was really important for that imagery to be put out there. Because as we all know, images are very powerful. And if you don't see yourself out there in the vast land of media that we see, sometimes you don't feel validated, like you don't matter. And I wanted people to realize that they matter and your stories matter. So. Absolutely. And I think that speaks to the element of representation. Like many people feel more represented because Barack Obama is the president, but at the same time, he is now the president. It's important to him to be represented, or people to be, excuse me, people to be represented at that age as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I have to ask, what was the biggest challenge you had when writing this movie? Because there are so many, I, I sort of talked about this at the beginning, there's just so many pitfalls that you could fall into writing a story like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think the challenges that I had writing it were, were the same that I have writing any script, because it's just really difficult to write a screenplay, the, uh, uh, an original screenplay, which, which we, we, I drew from inspiration and from biographical fact, but it wasn't based on anything um, other than the anecdote. So, so you're just filling up blank pages, and that's a really hard thing to do. You're banging your head against the wall in a room by yourself day after day after day, and occasionally you have you know, your producing partner chiming in and saying, when's it coming? When's it, when am I gonna read it? When am I gonna read it? <laughs> It's actually probably the best thing that you could Actually, have. it was extremely motivating, and, yeah. and, and I was writing the part with Tika in mind, so that helped too. But um, I think, so, uh, so screenwriting things aside, I think the great, the, the great discovery for me in writing it, it was really a joy to write, and the great privilege was getting to step outside of myself, you know, getting to write a complex part for Tika, for, for someone that looks like Tika, you know, for, for someone who's had different life experiences than me, a character that has, embracing the racial nuances, the cultural nuances, and just walking in, in someone else's shoes. So that was really my, uh, my greatest sort of, I guess, I guess you could call it a challenge, but it was really, it was, it was a pretty profound uh, uh, writing experience because I got to sort of open the doors of empathy and, and let in uh, a, a lot of really great stuff that maybe you're closed off to. Was there a particular scene? Oh, sorry, Tika, go ahead. No, I just want to piggyback on top of that because I just appreciate the thoughtfulness in it. He wasn't, you know, you'll see, you know, hopefully when you see it tomorrow or tonight or whatever, the cultural references were so thoughtful. It wasn't just thrown up against the wall to say, well, here's two black people who talk about good times. You know what I mean? <laughs> it wasn't like that. It was just so thoughtful. And, um, you know, we always talk about being inclusive in this, in Hollywood and things like that. And I feel like what Rich did was, he. I love that he stepped outside his, because you always hear, well, I don't know how to write you. You know, I don't know how to write that kind of person. And it's like, well, we're people. We fall in love. We Some of us go to college. Some of us don't, you know. But the fact that he st stepped outside of his comfort zone or whatever he didn't know and, found, and, and went and researched what he needed to know in order to write it, I just I, I have to give him a round of applause for that. Thank you. I, I also think it's a testament to your performances, I mean, as well as your direction, but your performances and how subtle they are. When it comes to something like a Good Times reference, the way that the two of you are talking together in an art museum is quiet, it's smart, you're not kind of like, Good Times! Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's, it's a really smart way that, that you play it. I, I have to ask, I'd be remiss to ask this, have the Obamas seen the movie yet? Are they going to see it? No, as far as we know, they have not seen it. Uh, as far as I hope they will see it. Um, and I hope they appreciate it, but uh, it's on their, it's in the White House, right? I think, I think John Legend, who's one of our executive producers, said he got them a copy or the invites out there. So yeah. he, uh, he's definitely talked to the president about it. Can you imagine the, uh, Michelle, you want to sit down, you want to watch well, he was, this? Do uh, <laughs> you want to relive this? Yes, <laughs> He said he was saying, like, so I'm a part of that movie about your first date. Just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> what would you hope that he takes from it, that he and Michelle take from it, from your performances? I hope they just, to be honest, smile. You know, maybe it reignites something. Who knows? Like, I, not reignites. <laughs> I mean, they, oh, my gosh. I take that back. Cut this part. Um, <laughs> Michelle's kind of like, what do you mean reignite? I know. We're she's good. like, girl, I'm already good. ignited. Like, Fire. I got everything right here. Fire's alive with us. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I hope it makes them smile. You know, the, the great thing about the, these screenings that we've been going to, people just walk out there like we feel refreshed and happy and especially... Very sweet. It's like more than anything a very sweet movie. Sweet date movie. And, and I think people are ready for that. They're ready for a little positivity and, you know, no green screens. You know, I think it's just a sweet, real, authentic, loving movie, and great for dates, take notes, boys. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, so hopefully they'll, they'll just smile. There's a wonderful moment in it where you get a sense of, uh, I mean, whether or not this is, you know, actual thing that happened or not, Barack's sensitivity, which is after the movie when, when Michelle kind of yells at him, he takes it, 
He takes it in, he thinks about it, and he takes it for ice cream. And you're just kind of like, what a good guy. Like, only a really great guy would do that, because most men would be like, don't you, don't yell at me well, in public. Well, she didn't yell at him. She just spoke strongly. She yelled. She's, she yelled. <laughs> See, men and women are so different. She didn't yell. I, you know, I asked, I, I asked Richard what the hardest scene, uh, hardest part of writing it for him was. What were the hardest scenes for you to play? What was the scene in the movie that gave you the most pause going into it in terms of, I really don't want to be impersonating here. I feel like I could get trapped in impersonation in this moment. What scenes, was there a scene like that for you? No, no. The <laughs> toughest part for me was walking. I know it sounds stupid, but to walk slow. I walk really fast and I have really long legs. So to walk slow for like the romantic camera and you know it's a romantic movie um but no i had a lot of fun man i prepared a lot and i rehearsed in my hotel room and over and over and over and over um so no i mean i wasn't every scene i was ready for i think i think right 100 percent. yeah the, there's a there's a big uh, centerpiece speech that parker has to give playing barack in, in the movie it pro it's probably like seven or eight minutes long and he did it probably eight times in a row and messed up two words, we're talking about like 12 pages of dialogue. So um, yeah, it, it was, he was incredibly prepared. Both of them were, they both came to set uh, in Chicago off book, completely off book, every line memorized, which is not standard. Usually actors have to get fed their lines, you know, while they're doing takes and stuff like that. But, uh, but they rehearsed it like a play. They were rehearsing over Skype. We rehearsed together. They did it uh, separate and, and, and apart. Um, and we just we just rehearsed the the hell out of it really because we had no time we shot it in 17 days so 17, 17 days yeah so so everything needed to be <laughs> yeah. what? So apparently, apparently so go see our hard work <laughs> but apparently we have an audience of independent filmmakers who know what that means yeah but like, I made my last one in 30. <laughs> So, but so everything to, to maximize our time, everything needed to be really meticulously planned and designed. And you, you, you could, I couldn't have pulled it off if they hadn't been as prepared as they were. Absolutely. And I have to ask uh, the credit sequence at the beginning, the, the titles, what, where did you draw that inspiration from graphically? It, I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was from, but I know it's, it's an homage to something. Uh, it's, it's two, it's two movie, two 80s movies combined. Um, uh, uh, Dirty okay. Dancing, what? No, no, Dirty, Dirty Dancing and uh, uh, Breaking Out. Is that the name of it? The, the, what's the break the dance? Break Electric movie? Boogaloo? Breaking? Yeah. Breaking, Breaking. Yeah. Um, and it kind of has the graffiti uh, um, uh, font to it. But the Miss You Much song, Janet Jackson's Miss You Much playing behind it was, that was actually the first scene in the script that I wrote, and Miss You Much was written into the script. It was, that song is so funky, it's off Rhythm Nation. It was a big hit that year, that summer. Um, and it really orients you to the time and place um, and to the feeling of being in Chicago in the 80s, hot day, love is in the air, and, uh, and he's, you know, he's getting ready for his date. He's kind of psyching himself up. So Smoking his cigarettes. Oh, chain smoking his butts. <laughs> Let's open it up to the audience for questions. Who has questions out there? Hi, Tika. Hi, my Hi. love. I have to first and first say that you're my favorite villain currently on <laughs> primetime television. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the central theme for Southside with you tends to be a love story. Um, working with John Legend, what was that creative and collaborative process like um, in the executing produced this film? And did you take that same approach with producing um, Black Wall Street? Um, well, John Legend came in toward the towards the end where he saw one of the first edits and he, he got to see it privately and he was really inspired that he wrote the original so, so, an original song at the end. So you should definitely stay for that because it makes people cry most of the time. And, um, and it's amazing, it's just a beautiful film, um, uh, song. But he was just so inspired that he said when he saw us play Michelle and Barack, he didn't see us anymore, he saw them. And um, so he became part of, we were like, come on board, great. you know. And he's been promoting an amazing uh, part of the executive producing team. Um, but so we collaborated again. Uh, we both wanted to do this project called Black Wall Street. And uh, I just think it's important to put different facets of the African-American community out there and especially things that people just don't know and it was it's an autonomous community it was an autonomous community uh, that had their own banks and all these businesses because it was 
a necessity. And uh, so we, we're just, we're, it's in the beginning stages of development. And uh, we're just excited to just show another side of, of the community for everyone to see, just like they did in Underground, you know, on WGN. And WGN is super excited about it. So it's in the beginning stages. Everybody's like, can I get in it? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> uh, next question. Hi. Um, in doing research and preparing for the film, what was the most surprising thing that you learned about Michelle and Barack that you didn't come across that you learned in preparing? Well, I think we, uh, well, I knew a lot about Barack Obama uh, from the beginning. I was just a huge fan. I've been a fan. Um, but what I didn't realize about Michelle was that she had skipped second grade and that she had graduated from Harvard, I think probably 22, 23, so that by 25, she was a second year associate and essentially Barack's boss during the summer. And so, yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, it was hugely impressive and it just adds to, to the mystique, I mean, the, the success that these, uh, these people have accomplished. Yeah, um, I didn't know about Barack's uh, f family life because I kind of didn't want to read so much in depth about him. I wanted to really get to know him during the date for real. And so there's stuff about his dad and I didn't know he went to Harvard and, you know, and kind of had this, you know, um, relationship, this sort of relationship with his father. I didn't know um, how far that went. So mostly about his family life, I didn't know about Barack. I have to ask, what was the casting process like for you? I know you were sort of a part of it early on as a producer, but what was the casting process like for you? And did you have to audition? Did you go in with a... They stopped me on the street, man. I was crazy. No. <laughs> I, uh... Hey, Barack! Hey, man. <laughs> no, um, I sent in two tapes. The first tape was a full-on impersonation. But it was like a traditional audition thing. I live in London, so it's just... I sent in a tape. And that was uh, <laughs> an impersonation. wasn't very good acting. And then, um, and then yeah, I spoke to Rich for... 20 minutes before my second tape, and then sent in a better one. What, what, what was said in that second in that conversation before the second tape? Well, I should I just really wanted him to be the guy because obviously there's an uncanny resemblance, um, and so I I just said you know drop drop the president, drop the commander in chief, the guy you see on TV every night, and just bring more of yourself to it, and and you're just a, a guy trying to get a girl to go have a cup of coffee with you. Just think about it on those terms. And, um, and he did, but he also had done so much work on the, the imp impersonation version that the uh, cadences and the mannerisms were bubbling up in just the right ways, it, totally uncalculated. Um, so, so he was really bringing more of himself and playing a real guy now, um, but you could feel the uh, residual Obama-isms, if you will. It was amazing. Next question. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, learning the mannerisms of Michelle, are there any mannerisms that you learn playing her that you do in your everyday life? <laughs> um, one, well, I've, uh, oh yeah, she, she definitely gives a. There's that great gif of her doing that to John Boehner a few years ago. She does it to a lot of people. I mean, John, yeah, John Boehner, she was like, let me t look. And, and I think, I think. You know, and there's this other great video of her, you know, people are like, oh, she's, you know, she's very sweet and da, da, da. But there's this other video where she was at a rally and somebody was like yelling something from the crowd. And she's like, I don't do this well. Do you, do you want me to leave? I, do, I don't do this. So I'm like, oh, I, I know that person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, some of the looks, you know, but some of it, you know, she hand, she um, holds her heart, her hand to her heart a lot when she's talking about something that she loves. So I just wanted to do little things that um, reminded you of her, but it was really an, an embodiment of the essence of her that I wanted to capture and her confidence and, and all those things. Um, I didn't want to do an, a caricature of her. I gotta ask because uh, they're gonna be leaving the White House in January. Do you guys have a favorite Barack and Michelle moment or Barack moment over the last eight years? Anytime she's like fixing something on him or like, or like, you know, doing that or just, you know, you don't see many politicians and their wives like touching, you know? So you're, it's like, yes, relationship goals, touch me, <laughs> you know? I like the picture, I think it's after the inauguration, I think. I know they're like on an elevator. Do you all know that picture on an elevator? Yeah, I think she has his jacket on. Yeah. That's really sweet. Yeah, that's sweet. 
I go for the 108 year old woman that visited the oh world my gosh. a few months ago. That will li- like anytime I'm bummed out, I put that on and I'm just like, oh, this is, life is good. <laughs> so, um, I think we have time for two more questions. Or Richard, do you have a favorite moment? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, there's a campaign video uh, where they talk about the first date. And, uh, you know, uh, Barack, so Michelle's pretty much narrating it. This came out in 2012. Michelle's narrating it. And Barack is just kind of standing there and going, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> ge- ge- gentlemen, take notes, take notes. <laughs> and she, she gives him the, the, side eye, the side eye. It's just like, he's so cocky. <laughs> but earned. Uh, next question, right here. Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to know any if you were interested in any other genres after this, what other genres you'd like to act in or like direct or write for. I'm, I, I, I have very eclectic taste in movies, so um, uh, I, could see, I could see myself uh, uh, diving into all kinds of genres. Probably not a, uh, a first date of a president and first lady ever again. Um, <laughs> But uh, but definitely, yeah, I love drama, uh, romance, um, uh, historical films, so yeah, we'll see. Has anyone contacted you and be like, we want to do a Ronald and Nancy Reagan first date movie? Uh, not that, <laughs> but I did, get, I did get interest about, would you want to direct, um, uh, it was another young politician movie. I won't say what it was, but I was just like, I think I need to move on from that. I don't want to be that guy. The, the one director that brings humanity to politicians. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys, any other genres that you want to? Yeah, no, I want to do it all as well. I've done a lot of action, and this is my first romantic drama. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun. So yeah, everything. You'll see me in everything. Yeah, I think most actors want, and, and directors and creator, creators want to do so many different things. So I think we're all, we're all, we all agree. And hopefully we'll get to do some more stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I think this is our last question. <laughs> I think there's the last question right here. Hi, thank you all for coming. My question is, what has working on this project taught each one of you about love? That's a great question. Nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and that's a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I guess, no, go. No, you go. Okay. So. Um, um, I guess for me, really, I mean, sounds sappy a little bit, but really listening to the person and not judging as fast as we all do, you know, and really giving people grace in where they're at at the moment. And, uh, you know, and and, and really um, acknowledging the effort that people put in to try to get to know you rather than quickly dismissing them. You know, I think that's important. Yeah. <laughs> Half the room was laughing at that. Like, like the other half of them was like, no, don't listen yeah, to people. Don't, don't put the effort clap. in. Don't you clap. I hate love. No, I'm not clapping. No, I think for me, um, that love can be built or should be built on like a foundation of friendship. And through the film, they really get to know one another and they listen and support one another. And, you know, there's a great part when Michelle tells Barack that about forgiveness. She's like, you need to do this. And he takes it in. And I don't know if he's ever thought about it or heard it. Um, but they became friends, I think, over the course of the day, as, w- as well as falling in, falling in love. Um, so yeah, friendship. Friendship, clap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, people can see this wonderful movie starting tonight, right? Is it, is it New York and LA? Or? Uh, it's, it's all over the country. All over the country. Nationwide, uh, and screen- preview screenings begin tonight at, at different theaters. And then starting tomorrow, it's all over. And you can check on Fandango, I think. Fandango, movietickets.com. Yeah. Just Google Southside with You Showtimes, and stuff will come up. And Congratulations. Tweet, doing all that. Tweet, social media, spread the word. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, you guys. Here. Such a lovely film. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.